Hello and welcome to Grade 11 at Colonel Bai. My name is Mr. Richardson and I'm the CAS coordinator here at Colonel Bai as well as the IB core support teacher. Um, and I'll be taking some time today to tell you all about CAS, explain how to complete all the requirements and what is CAS is all about. So to start with, CAS is really part of the IB core here. And there's three components to the IB core. There's the theory of knowledge course that you'll be taking and I may be teaching some of you in that course. Um, there's your extended essay, which we'll be learning more about shortly, and I'll be uh, helping support some of you with your extended essays. And then there's CAS, Creativity, Activity, and Service. All right, so what is CAS? Well, I'm going to explain what CAS is now. And uh, the best way to think about CAS is just to think about all the things that you're already involved in as far as your extracurricular life. You have your academic life at Colonel Boy, but then you have your extracurricular life. And those may be things like team sports, uh, clubs at school. There may be uh, activities that you do outside of school as well. Maybe you're volunteering at the library or you're involved in uh, mixed martial arts or something like that, those lines. So CAS uh, is just a way to really track all that, uh, those activities and reflect and explain what you've learned from them. So how do we do that and why do we do that? Well, first, the reason we want to uh, keep track of all your CAS experiences is because it gives you an opportunity to really set yourself apart from other applicants when it comes to applying for university, when it comes to applying for scholarships or for summer jobs or even jobs that come later. Um, you know, lots of uh, students that apply to university and for scholarships and so forth uh, have fantastic marks. Um, if we look at, if you're thinking about going down to the States, there's lots of students who have perfect SAT scores and they're applying and they have really high averages. So the, those universities are looking for something else to help um, determine which students are really best to accept for their program. And CAS is a really excellent way for them to, to decipher which students are best. Okay. Um, so CAS really, again, starts in grade 11 and goes through to the end of grade 12. Um, again, it's not really designed to be extra work. It's just a way to track all the things that you're already uh, taking part in. Um, we don't count hours in CAS anymore. You may notice in ManageBack that it gives you options of entering how many hours you've been doing something. That is not a requirement of CAS any longer. Okay. Um, your CAS experiences, in order to count as CAS, they should be at least four to six weeks long. So something you just do once, one day, uh, say it was a bake sale or you decide to go hiking up a mountain one Saturday, that's not a CAS experience. A CAS experience is something that lasts over a period of time of at least one month. Many CAS experiences will last all year long. You may be involved in uh, piano lessons or you may be involved in uh, rowing outside of uh, school. Uh, maybe you take musical instruments uh, lessons. Something like that goes all year long. So that's definitely a CAS experience. Um, but if you just decided to take a weekend trip down to a, some kind of competition, that in itself is not a CAS experience. If there was a lot of preparation that was required, then yes, that would be a CAS experience if, if that preparation took a month or longer. Okay, And when it comes to, to especially self-supervised exercise, well, then we're really looking at three to six months before it's going to count towards a CAS experience. So the minimum is one month, but when it comes specifically to exercise, you're going to need to show much more uh, commitment um, to that to really get any kind of health outcomes that are beneficial to you. So CAS has a set of seven learning outcomes, and you can see them here. And what you want to do is decide which learning outcomes are related to your activity. And then you're going to set goals, and you're going to reflect on how well you met the goals and the learning outcomes that you've chosen to uh, as part of that learning experience. You know, enter those into manager back. And I'll talk more about that a little later on. Okay. One thing to uh, keep in mind though is that these are this is not just a checklist. You do not try and just check off everything for every um, experience. Because what you really want to do is sit down and reflect and suppose 
You know, you say, well, I've met new challenges and learned new skills in one of my experiences here. Well, you really want to be able to explain and justify what challenges you met, how you overcame those challenges, and why um, your skills have been improved because of your participation in that CAS experience. Uh, so if you've just checked all of these off, then you're going to have trouble really um, justifying if you met. So how is CAS structured? Well, there are three areas of CAS. The C stands for creativity, the A for activity, and S for service. Creativity is obvious. Activity is where you're physically exerting yourself in some way. And service is where you're volunteering your time. There's two categories, of course, of CAS. And most of the CAS activities you do are called CAS experiences. And those are the everyday extracurricular things you're involved in. Uh, sports teams, clubs, um, volunteering at the library, that kind of stuff. And then there's a CAS project. You are expected to do one CAS project over the course of your grade 11 or grade 12 year. And I'll explain more about the CAS project later on in the presentation. Um, so here's some examples of creativity. You would have guessed all of these already. Nothing out of the ordinary here, but there's a lot of things where we're involved in creative aspects, um, in things that we don't necessarily immediately think of as creativity. So here's some other ideas for you. If you're involved in any of these, Basically, any time you're creatively thinking to accomplish a task, then you could count that as creativity as part of your CAS experience. And you'd check that off in ManageRock. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. Activities, obviously uh, lots of sports. Um, but it doesn't have to be a sport to be exerting yourself. Um, some people like to do um, skateboarding. If you're involved in skateboarding and you're always trying to get better at it over a period of time, then that would count. Uh, you could be involved in bowling on a bowling team or maybe a community garden on a regular basis. That would count as well. If you play a musical instrument, of course, that is uh, exerting yourself uh, uh, as well. If you play it at a very high level, that is. Not just, you know, chopsticks on the piano, but if you actually have your grade 8 to 10 piano or you're really advanced on your uh, instrument, like a saxophone or a guitar, then that, that is definitely exerting yourself as well. And then you have your service activities, which is basically when you're volunteering or helping others. Um, all of these things would count as long as you're not being paid for them. You cannot be remunerated for your service activities for it to count in as CAS. Each time you um, complete a CAS activity, or when you start a CAS activity, you have to enter it into ManageBack. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the presentation. But uh, what you would do is enter a, one at the, a reflection at the beginning, a reflection in the middle, and a reflection at the end. Uh, beginning reflection, you would talk about why you chose the learning outcomes that you did how they relate to the activity, and how you uh, think those learning outcomes will build your own skills and experience. And you'll provide some uh, evidence. Then you'll have a middle reflection where you will assess how well you're meeting your goals, where there are areas of strength, where there are areas of need, how you plan to overcome those challenges, and provide some more evidence of your participation. And then at the end, you'll reflect on how well you achieved your goals, how well you accomplished the task itself or the uh, improved your skills, what you learned in the experience, and some final evidence. Uh, now, you can't have more than three reflections in ManageBack, but three is a minimum for each uh, activity that you record in ManageBack. There are four levels of evidence, and uh, I'll go through them with you now. If you're participating in something that is in school, established team that's led by a teacher and organized by the teacher, and you're just participating in it, um, you don't need a lot of evidence because there, the action itself is evidence, self-evident. So if you're playing on the basketball team, you know, I will see in the games, you guys will won or lose. Um, maybe you win the season, and you're the season champions, but it'll be obvious that you're participating in that. So that will not require a lot of evidence. Um, if you are in the school musical, 
uh, you don't need to provide a lot of evidence. The final production itself, the performance, is the evidence. So you can, you know, upload a couple clips from the final production, but that would be enough evidence. If it's student-initiated, though, you may possibly need additional evidence. Now, if it's something like the uh, dance club, well, again, it has a final performance, so um, they'll I'll be able to see that final performance. That is the evidence in and of itself. Um, and you can, again, upload a clips from the uh, final performance, and that would work. But if it's something like tutoring, then you need to um, provide some evidence of organization, of planning documents, of lesson plans, of correspondence between the person um, and scheduling that you're uh, tutoring, and maybe uh, uh, keeping track of some of the outcomes. Uh, that would count as evidence for that. But when we move to out of school CAS experiences, now we need a higher level of evidence because um, I have no way to directly verify that what you're saying is true. So if you're volunteering at the library or the hostel, you may have a schedule of shifts. You might have a uniform, an ID pass. Maybe there's some training manuals or work pamphlets. Uh, there could be certificates of qualification. Any of those things, pictures of them can be uploaded to manage back. And then self-supervised exercise is the highest level of uh, evidence required. And this is because it's too easy to just go into management and say, well, you know, I, I go running twice a week every week. Um, maybe you do, and that's great. But it, you have to be able to show some evidence. So everyone's just going to write that they go running twice a week. Uh, so you need to invest in some maps. You have to have a plan. You have to have... Uh, Look at increasing your time, uh, measuring your heart rates, having very specific goals and times you run. Uh, have an app that tracks where you ran, how long uh, it took, and uh, you can upload screenshots of that. Uh, if you're going to the gym, you can show a picture of your gym membership, uh, your log of when you go and work out, uh, your workout routines, details about what you're striving to uh, achieve, um, what part of your body you're trying to get fit. So, And uh, evidence of actually improving and having some health benefits okay so that's important to have all of that if you just write that you know you go for a walk once a week for a month that's not going to qualify so self-supervised exercise has got to be continuous for at least three to six months to get any health benefit out of it and that's what you're really trying to uh, show just because you walk uh, down the road every once in a while i mean that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's a healthy thing to participate in, but it doesn't qualify you as, as achieving something in within the context of CAS. And it's not going to impress universities if you tell them, yeah, I took a walk, a, a walk once a week. Um, you need to have uh, goals that show perseverance and commitment. Okay. All right, so let's move to the CAS project now. So we've talked about a CAS experience. That's when it's organized for you and you just choose to participate. But a CAS project is when you initiate it, you plan, you are collaborating with others, you are going to organize something, an event or a ongoing club or something that is all because of your creative ideas and your organization. Okay, And you're expected to do one project sometime during grade 11, 12. So usually a project cannot just be one thing. You cannot just say, well, I, I did a bake sale. Um, and like, yeah, there's some preparation in, in the baking and that kind of stuff, but it's not long enough. If you, if you did a bake sale every month for six months, then you could say that that was a, a project. But I use the example of bake sale um, because a lot of people try to use bake sales to raise money for things, but it's really not very efficient use of time or resources because by the time you add up all the cost of the ingredients, the time put into uh, making it, and the amount you actually get from, uh, from selling the stuff, it's not very uh, effective. And the other thing is, is universities aren't going to be impressed because you – ran a bake sale. <laughs> you need to be a little more creative and uh, organize things that are much more meaningful. Okay. Um, again, you got to enter your reflections and your evidence uh, into ManageVac for your uh, CAS project as well. 
So I'll take some time to show you uh, what Manage Back looks like and how you enter uh, activity into Manage Back. So when you, if you go to your CAS tab and you say add a new CAS experience, this is what you'll see. So you enter the name of the experience here, choose whether it's creativity, activity, or service, take off whether it's school-based or community-based, um, write in a description here, supervisor's name, their email, and their title. And right here is where you select and choose your uh, learning outcomes, okay? Then uh, this is what you'll see. Once you've entered it, you'll see a description. Now let's take a look at this person. This person entered uh, a description and, and chose some learning outcomes for a concert band. So let's look at number one. Identify own strengths and develop areas for growth. Yes, that's related to band. Two, demonstrate that challenges have been undertaken, developed new skills in the process. Yes. Uh, demonstrate how to initiate and plan a CAS experience. Mm, no. I would say that's not really part of what band is. So I would take that out. Um, show commitment and perseverance. Yes. Demonstrate the skills and recognize the benefits of working collaboratively. Absolutely. Okay. So all of those are good except for, again, the third one. I would take that out because when, you, when you're um, writing your reflections in ManageBack, you're going to have a hard time explaining how performing in band helped you initiate and plan a CAS experience. That's more something you would add to your CAS project. Okay. Here's what it looks like. Uh, you'll see a graph that shows over time which learning outcomes you've um, completed so far. Now you should have some, at least one in all of them, but more than two, two or more in at least five areas. So at the end of grade 12, I'll look and see how many you've got. Make sure there, there's some in every category. And then I'll check this off here. And then it'll show you that you've completed your CAS learning outcome requirements. And then if you click right here on timeline, you can see the different activities that this person was involved in and it'll show you over what time period. So you're not always involved in everything for two years. You're involved in different things at different times. Sometimes it might be busier, sometimes less busy. You might work in the summer rather than be involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. Maybe around Christmas, things slow down. Okay. Um, but Typically, you should uh, have completed between six and 10 entries into your portfolio by the end of grade 12. Okay, so I'll show you what it looks like if you go into Manage Back now. So here's uh, what you'll see. You'll click on uh, CAS, you'll add, click Add a CAS Experience. And here you'll put the name, maybe you'll put uh, Debating. Okay, you'll say it's school-based. It's not a CAS project, so I'm not going to mark that. This is creative. Uh, I'll put a description in here. And I'll put the supervisor's name and Bigham and the teacher. Okay. Put their email address in. And then down here, you can see this is where you select the different learning outcomes that are applicable. So for debating what's applicable, Strength and growth, yes. Initiative and planning, no. Uh, collaborative skills, yes. You're working together with your debating partner. Uh, ethics of choices and actions, no. Challenges and skills, are you meeting new challenges and gaining skills? Yes, absolutely. Uh, commitment and perseverance, you could argue that, but uh, I think that three is really enough. Global engagement, not really. So if you really wanted to add this fourth one of commitment and perseverance, but I picture that more uh, as something you, you're involved in over years and years, like learning to play piano would be commitment and perseverance. Um, but if, you're, if you need some commitment and perseverance, uh, then you could click that one off. But it's not really relevant if you have it from other areas like performing um, a musical instrument. And then you just put add cast experience here. And then you'll see that chart. And here's the three learning outcomes that I've chosen. And if I click on debating here, then I would add my reflections in here. And okay, that's where I would start writing my reflections, add a new reflection. 
and then start writing it, okay? So that is basically your CAS uh, portfolio. If you need a com cash completion form for a uh, CAS activity that you're involved in outside of school, this is where you would get it. And they can assign it, then you can scan that and upload it as evidence. Um, again, if it's an in-school activity, you don't need to ask the uh, teacher to complete a supervisor review. But if it's outside of school, then yes, that should be completed. Okay, so that is CAS. Um, I'm certainly here to answer any questions you may have. You can reach me by email is the easiest. So chris.richardson at ocdsb.ca. I'll also be creating some office hours and um, uh, we'll, we can meet by Google Meets or talk in person that way as well. Okay, so I wish you all the best in your CAS journey and your IB journey at Colonel By and all the best in grade 11 and 12.